What's up, mga kasayan? So, we're going to talk about forces within the Earth. So, the lessons here will cover the earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So, different forces tremble and shake Earth. These forces cause landforms and water forms to change and form. We will also study how forces such as earthquakes and volcanic eruptions come about to create landforms and water forms. These changes can be beneficial and harmful to people. You will also learn emergency preparedness plan before, during, and after earthquake and volcanic activities. So we'll start first by talking about the chapter concept map. The Earth has an outermost layer called the crust and may be classified as oceanic crust and continental crust. The crust is broken down into huge thick plates with movement resulting to spreading of oceanic plates subduction of one plate by another plate, or slipping of plates. Spreading of oceanic plates results to formation of new oceanic plates. Subduction of one plate by another plate results to formation of volcano, and of course, that will cause natural disasters like violent eruptions. Slipping of plates causes shaking or trembling of the Earth's surface, or what we call earthquakes. Now, these results or causes, humans and in the environment here are affected by it. Earth's solid, thinnest, and outermost layer is the crust. It is made out of rocks and minerals. Since the crust is relatively cold, it is rocky and brittle. It can fracture during earthquakes. The crust consists of plates that are either continental or oceanic. The continental plate contains the different landforms and continents. Heavier, denser, and darker than the continental crust is the oceanic plate that consists of the landforms below the oceans and seas. The oceanic crust is thinner than the continental crust. On the crust are different landforms shaped by different forces. These forces may be endogenic and exogenic in nature. Endogenic forces are those that come from within the Earth. The force produced by convection current in the mantle is called an endogenic force. Exogenic forces are those that develop outside of the surface of the Earth. Force of the wind is an exogenic force. Beneath the crust is the mantle, which is divided into the upper mantle, a stenosphere, and the lower mantle. The upper mantle made out of solid bedrock contains most of the Earth's mass. The crust of the upper mantle make up the lithosphere, which is rigid, hard, and makes up the tectonic land plates about 100 kilometers thick. Beneath the lithosphere is a soft layer called a stenosphere. The temperature and pressure in this region are so high that rock melt. The lower lithosphere and the stenosphere are both part of the upper mantle. The lower mantle is from a depth of about 660 kilometers down near the base of the mantle. It is more rigid than the upper mantle. Outer core is made out of molten iron and nickel with about 10% sulfur. The inner core is under extreme pressure. That is why it remains solid. It is made up of solid iron and nickel. The plate tectonic theory. Do you know the seven continents of the world? Have you ever wondered why the Earth's landmass is divided into different continents? In 1912, Alfred Wegener, a German geologist and meteorologist, first proposed the Continental Drift Theory. The Continental Drift Theory states that there was once a supercontinent called Pangaea, which over time had separated and drifted apart. It further claims that the continents consist of lighter rocks that rest on top of heavier crust rock. It further claims that the continents consist of lighter rocks that rest on top of heavier crustal materials. Wegener also proposed that the relative positions of the continents are not rigidly fixed because they are slowly moving at a rate of most 1 meter per century. This theory was initially rejected by some scientists. But decades later, it became the forerunner of the plate tectonics theory. The theory of the plate tectonic tells us that the surface of the Earth is divided into several pieces of plates that float along the asthenosphere. 
It explains how the different geological phenomena like earthquake, volcanism, continental drift, and mountain formations occur. Why do tectonic plates move? The plates move along their boundaries in different directions and at a different speed. Studies show that the release of heat from the core produces convection current in the mantle. This convection current causes the oceanic and continental plates to move. When hot mantle materials rise and reach a weaker part of the crust, some escape as magma into the lithosphere. Some of the hot mantle material spreads sideways beneath the lithosphere and cool off. The mantle materials that cool become dense and sink deeper into the core. As they get near the core, the sinking materials heat up again and the cycle continues. Types of Tectonic Plate Boundaries There are three kinds of tectonic plate boundaries, convergent, divergent, and transform boundaries. Convergent plate boundary is formed when plates meet from opposite direction causing one plate to be subducted or moved beneath the other. Divergent is formed when two tectonic plates move away from each other. The sunken blocks form a valley called the rift. And last, transform the zone between two plates sliding horizontally past one another. Most of the transform fault boundaries are found on the ocean floor. The North American and Pacific plates along San Andreas Fault are sliding past one another for about 10 million years at an average rate of 8 centimeters per year. What is an earthquake? An earthquake is the shaking or trembling of the Earth's crust. It may be caused by volcanic eruptions, sudden displays of Earth's crust along a fault or collision of plates in the deep zones of the Earth. Where do earthquakes occur? Where the sudden rupture of rocks or plates takes place is called the focus or hypocenter. The point of Earth's surface directly above the focus is called the epicenter of the earthquake. Earthquakes in the circum-Pacific belt originate mostly beneath the ocean floor near the coast. About 90% of the world's earthquakes and 8% of the world's largest earthquakes occur along the ring of fire, intensity, and magnitude of an earthquake. Seismologists are scientists who study earthquakes and their effects. They gather data and monitor Earth's crust using a seismograph. A seismograph is an instrument used to record the intensity, direction, and duration of movement of the ground. The record of the earth tremor produced by the seismograph is called the seismogram. It indicates the magnitude of energy released during an earthquake. The intensity gives a qualitative description of the severity of shaking. It is determined from the effects of people, infrastructures, and the natural environment. It uses the descriptive scale called Modify Mercalli Intensity Scale, as you can see right here. The magnitude of an earthquake indicates the quantitative measure of the size of the earthquake. At its source, it represents the amount of energy released by an earthquake. The scale used to measure the earthquake's magnitude is called the Richter Magnitude Scale. Aftermath of an earthquake there are many changes that happen after a strong earthquake. Among these are the following. Extensive damage to communities like collapsed buildings, homes, roads, and bridges, broken power lines, water pipes, and gas connection, communication lines, and other important structure. Damages to industrial facilities that may result to contamination of the environment with toxic chemical substances. Death due to fire, chemical poisoning, and failing debris from collapsing structures, psychological and emotional damages to the survivors due to fear and loss of loved ones and properties, changes in natural landscapes like disappearance of small hills due to landslides, sinking of the ground when the soil loses its strength and stiffness due to the vibration caused by an earthquake. When this happens, the soil behaves more like a liquid than solid. This is called Liquefaction Formation of sinkholes caused by the shaking of loose materials and large fissures of the ground caused by the ripping apart of the soil near the surface of the earth. Lastly, we have the formation of tsunamis, a huge sea wave. 
produced by sudden movement of the ocean induced by earthquakes. One of the biggest and most destructive tsunamis was caused by a magnitude 9 earthquake in northeastern Japan last March 11, 2011. Earthquake is a natural calamity that cannot be prevented from occurring. However, damages especially to human lives can be prevented by being always prepared. Feelbox has prepared an earthquake preparedness guide to tell what to do before, during, and after an earthquake. Read, study, and follow these guidelines. Now, on this part, we're going to talk about volcanoes and volcanic eruptions. Because changes of the Earth's surface are not only caused by earthquakes. Geologists or scientists who study Earth and the processes that shape it have been able to learn more about the Earth's structure through volcanic activities. Now, what is a volcano? A volcano is a vent on Earth's crust. It can release magma, ash, and other gases. The mouth of the vent is called the crater. The circular depression formed either by the explosion or collapse of a volcano is the caldera. Crater lakes sometimes form in the caldera. Geologists learn about the Earth's interior and the process that occur in it by observing volcanic eruptions. The volcanic materials ejected by a volcano reveal clues about the condition, temperature, and pressure within the Earth. Volcanic or pyroclastic materials include the magma, lava, gases, and rocks released by a volcano. Magma refers to the molten rock. Magma that reaches the surface of Earth is called the lava. So magma is inside and lava is outside of the Earth's surface. Magma in the asthenosphere is produced when the plate movements create internal pressure within the Earth. Collision of plates may result to subduction which causes the magma from within the upper mantle to rise to the surface. This forms a volcano. Sometimes magma rises up and gets out through weak spots on Earth's surface in form of lava. During a volcanic eruption, different kinds of materials may be released from the vent of a volcano. These materials may be classified into three types. Gases, lava flow, and pyroclastic materials. Gases are given off in a large quantities during volcanic eruption. Gas emissions are mainly made out of steam but may include carbon dioxide, nitrogen, sulfur dioxide, and other less abundant gases. Lava is a molten material that reaches the Earth's surface. Its temperature may reach up to 1,200 degrees Celsius and it can incinerate anything flammable along its path. Lava may flow quietly out of the vent or be violently ejected by the volcano. Pyroclastic materials are fragments formed when magma is blasted out of the Earth's surface due to the pressure buildup of the gases trapped in it. The size of the fragments varies. It can range from the size of the dust particles to the size of stones and massive boulders. 1991 eruption, Mount Pinatubo emitted grayish green clouds of ash, rock, and smoke. Ash clouds caused rain that eventually caused mud flow called lahar. Lahar moved downhill, behaved like wet concrete, and buried everything in its path. Mount Pinatubo wiped out several towns with its lahar flow. Volcanoes may be classified according to their shape, size, and makeup. Shield volcanoes have broad cone with long gently sloped sides. The shape is flattened because of the lava flow from a central vent and spreads widely and thinly because of its low viscosity or fluidity. It does not build up near the vent. Examples of shield volcanoes are found their eruptions are non-violent because of the low viscosity of lava that flows from their vent. Cinder volcanoes are steeper but narrower than shield volcanoes. These are made out of loose rock fragments given off from the central vent. Ash, cinders, and bombs erupt explosively forming a cone-shaped hill. Volcanic materials do not spread out from the vent because they cool quickly, causing the sides of the volcano to become steeper. The lifespan of an active cinder cone volcano is short. Many cinder cone volcanoes are already extinct. As landforms, they easily erode. An example of a cinder cone volcano is Mount Etna. Stratovolcano or composite volcanoes are cone-shaped and steeper than cinder and shield types. They are alternately made out of pyroclastic materials and rocks from solidified lava flow. 
they can become 8,000 feet high or more because the thick lava during eruption is not able to flow very far down the slope. It cools down because of its high viscosity. This causes the side of the volcano to become steep. Some of the popular types of composite volcanoes are Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier in Washington State, the Mayon Volcano in the Philippines, Mount Fuji in Japan, and the Mount Vesuvius in Italy. Volcanoes may be active, dormant, and extinct. An active volcano has at least one eruption during the past 10,000 years. A dormant volcano or inactive volcano is a volcano that has not erupted for the past 10,000 years, but it's still expected to erupt again. There are about 339 inactive volcanoes that are located in different parts of the Philippines. One of them is Mount Apo in Davao. Lastly, we have extinct volcanoes, a volcano that has not erupted for at least 10,000 years and is not expected to erupt again. Like other natural calamities, volcanic eruptions can be very disastrous. They can affect society, health, environment, transportation, as well as communication systems. Society and health For society and health, long-term exposure to volcanic dust and gases can cause respiratory illness. The areas affected by volcanic activities have to be evacuated. Ashes and other solid materials spewed during volcanic eruption cover houses, buildings, roads, bridges, and fields. Lava and pyroclastic flows run over and destroy houses, roads, and other structures. For the environment, lahar flows can destroy farmlands. Landscapes and natural environment are destroyed. Thick ashes and gases may block the sunlight for a long period of time. Gas emissions like sulfur dioxide they act with rainwater, producing what we call acid rain. And fast-flowing lahar can cause riverbank erosion and can weaken bridges. For transport and communication systems, lahar flow can destroy road and bridge links. Asphalts and gases may interfere with communication signals. Ashes or dust and gases immobilize transport vehicles and reduce visibility. On June 1991, ash from Mount Pinatubo covered a tail of the world's airways DC-10 airplane. Here we have beneficial effects. We'll start first with formation of new landscapes, local and tourist attraction bringing some economic value, geothermal energy. The Tiwi Geothermal Plant at Albay is located at the northeast flank of Mount Bolinao, an extinct stratovolcano in the East Philippine Volcanic Arc along the Philippine French. Volcanoes and the places nearby are a potential source of geothermal energy that can be tapped for the production of electricity by means of using steam. Ash and lava makes the soil fertile. The fertile volcanic soil in the people region where Mayon Volcano is located allow a baka plant to grow well. The heart is found to be a good ceramic material, can be made into plant pots, vases, tiles, and other decorative materials. The following are safety measures that may be undertaken before and during a volcanic eruption. You may pause the video and read the details. In this slide, you may also pause the video to view safety measures that may be undertaken after a volcanic eruption. We've learned that the Earth has the outermost layer called the crust and may be classified as two things, oceanic crust and continental crust. The crust is broken into huge thick plates that have movement resulting to spreading of oceanic plates, subduction of one plate by another, and slipping of plates. Spreading of oceanic plates results to the formation of new oceanic plates. Subduction of one plate by another plate results to the formation of volcano that can cause violent eruptions and slipping of plates causes shaking or trembling of the Earth's surface or what we call earthquakes. Volcanic eruptions and earthquakes affect the human and environment negatively and positively. If you have questions about the topic, feel free to type it in the comments below. If you learned something today, don't forget to like this video and if you're interested in more educational videos to come, click that subscribe and notification bell to be notified on the latest videos. I'll see you guys on my next video. And don't forget, you are your only limit.